Hey what's going on guys, how are you all doing? Welcome to a new series which we're gonna learn a lot with Node.js and Socket.io. So here we are in a brand new series and all the vibes or all the powers, we're just gonna go ahead and dive right into creating a brand new series on this channel. So the, the series is gonna be probably about, as you have heard from the title, is Node.js Socket.io. So just gonna take the Socket.io library and just gonna create a series, gonna like go through the examples, snippets, how Socket.io architecture works, how a server and a client can connect to each other, and how WebSocket has pretty much work so we're gonna just cover all of those in this particular series this is just gonna be like the first video on this series so introduction and just saying what is a socket.io why people use it what is it what is about what is based on and the server and the client uh, structure and how we pretty much work so I've just created this presentation right here in order to show you how everything pretty much works so let's just go ahead and see uh, or take a quick overview about the node.js socket.io so first things first what is socket.io Socket.io pretty much is a library for creating a client server structure. Well, a lot of clients can use WebSocket. So from here, we can say that web, or Socket.io is a wrapper around the WebSocket. So it's actually based on the WebSocket to connect to a server and being able to exchange real time data. It's specifically, or the real time data part right here is very, very important since like real time or exchanging real time data on a browser or on the, on the internet, like uh, pretty much like, so it's it's very, very important. So it's the data you're gonna exchange, it's events-like driven system. So for example, there is like chat messages, APIs, databases, uh, especially for chat messages, it's quite the nice example, the obvious thing you can use. So how chat actually works is using the WebSockets or we can use the Socket.io, which is, as I said, a wrapper even around the, web, the WebSocket pretty much. So you can, instead of using Socket.io, you can go ahead the hard way and use WebSockets. But it just like not a lot of people, not a lot of developers prefer to do so. So yeah, Socket.io is like the preferred thing you're gonna use library. It makes your life super useful. You can just with a couple of lines of code, you can create a lot of things. Now with a couple of lines of code, as I've told you, you can create a chat application between multiple users and start a using right out of the box with the library simplifies it even the most. So you will be, will be dealing with an events driven system where you emit a listing for events both on the clients and, and on the server. So not only the server gonna listen for the events or the clients, so both they can emit and they can listen for the events. So we're gonna just go and see that how, how it works if it's like uh, not obvious already or if you can't quite figure out how it works yet we're gonna see everything now what is WebSocket so how WebSocket pretty much works it's composed of two main factors actually so a server and a client as you know so the server is the main part or the main point right in the structure and not only one client usually more than one client they can connect to a server they can send data and they can fetch data from the server so if you are familiar with an HTTP protocol you can just like it's a stateless protocol it just like establishes the connection once you send the data you receive whatever data you needed or whatever data you requested then the connection is done so you close the connection and you go so this is all of it so this is how web pages pretty much you receive while the web sockets connection one when the client actually connect to a server he's always there so he has the real-time data whenever the server like submits something or uh, submits an event he's just gonna like listen for it and he's gonna know uh, everything about it. so the connection is not gonna go, go down after one request or something it's just gonna keep going alive till the client or the server uh, decides to shut it down. So the server is the main piece of the puzzle and where all the magic happens actually. It would have a database to store extended server data, but it's optionally, but yeah, this is how, how the structure works. And a client is the one who's gonna be connecting to the server and requesting or even submitting data to the server. So yeah, it's quite basic, quite simple. Here, as, as, as we can see, you can look on the structure of how clients can connect to a WebSocket server. So the, the main part in here, there's like the WebSocket server, where there's a three different kind of clients are connected to this WebSocket server. There is the, the like mobile phone or laptop or a normal, normal computer. They are actually connected to that WebSocket using the, the WebSocket or Socket.io, I should better say. So let's say that one client requested to the server is just going to send a, a socket uh, a socket event pretty much. So as I've said, Socket.io is a socket driven system. So you have to emit 
or you have to trigger events and the server have to listen for that specific event whenever this the server finds out that this specific event he's listening for uh, that has been like triggered he's just gonna like you know uh, reply or something send back data whatever whatever the user is requesting he's just gonna like reply to the server an event or image request events with an event name and you can send like a custom data object array binary blob uh, media whatever thing and it's just the server also can reply the same thing with the same data with like the the same way and Actually the first time whenever the client wants to connect to the server. He sends a connection uh, Request he's not gonna send a normal request in here, but he sends a connection request He says uh, I want to connect to this particular host and I want to connect uh, the host and the port of the server so the server is going to usually have the host and the ports so the static ones and it's just going to like bind the connection to that so it's going to have the full thing the event will be received by all the connected clients so let's say like a server uh, i want to send a specific event or a specific data to this it, all the clients going to be able to receive this data and like react up on this but not all the clients going to accept that just they just going to receive it this is how real time or how chats so whenever you're like this one is chatting with the server or chatting with this one this one is also going to know about this but in a very specific way, you can just limit that and stuff like this. So this is how WebSockets uh, in, in a nutshell actually works in a very basic way. So that was actually for the overview. Let's just go ahead and see the code. Now here's the official website of the Socket.io. Just type in Socket.io and you're going to get there uh, very easily. It has like a, a lot of documentation you can read through, a getting started guide and also a lot, a lot of demos. Uh, like among these demos, there is like a shadow application, there is a server implementation, a client implementation, everything you're going to need to learn about the sock.io. After this series, of course, you can just go ahead and learn the advanced things and more and more about the sock.io and you can use it on your next projects. So let's just go ahead and set up the Visual Studio code. I've, I've set up in here a very, very basic project, as you can see in here. It has like a server.js, app.js, an SRC folder and distribution folder. We can use it around this series. Uh, while we're now just gonna go very basic, now let's just go ahead and initialize this project with Node.js package.json. So if you're familiar, we need first to run npm init on the terminal, and in order to be able actually to uh, create a package.json and initialize this. So just gonna name it socket.io, give it like 1.0 uh, version, socket.io tutorial, whatever, and just gonna the app.js, the entry point, the test command, nothing, the git repository, the keywords, um, let's just go with socket.io, and the author, let's just put this stuff in with right there, so. And let's say it's MIT. So yes, create everything. And here we go. We've got a package.json. Now we need to install the libraries that's going to like allow the connection between a server and a client and all of that. And also beside all of that, we're going to need an express, uh, the express library, the express framework to use it with Node.js in order to create a server. So as you know, we need a server and we need the clients. This is going to be the, the server.js is going like, to represent our server. The app.js is going to represent our client. So the server needs express in order to be able to let the client connect to the server and exchange the data. So we're going to need to install first express and we install the socket.io. And lastly, for the client, it has like a very uh, or specific uh, library for this. So it's called socket.io dash clients just for the client. I'm just going to save it as dependency. I'm going to install all of that different things uh, in here, which the express is going to allow us, as I've told you, to create the server uh, while whatsoever this this tutorial is not like specified for learning express or learning node.js uh, therefore you, i have like a full course series on my tutorials or my on my channel actually it has covering the node.js and express and how it works or in very advanced topics you can just go ahead and watch it in order to learn but this is just specifically for soccer.io so just we're not going to explain a lot of things about express or something just going to create it very quickly right here so let them install and let's just go ahead and create that while they are actually installing. So first things first, we need to, here we go, they, they, they did that very fastly. So let's just go ahead and like require, uh, this is going to be the server. So we're going to start with the server first. We're going to require the express. Then we're going to create the application. So we're just going to be like express and we, we, we create an instance of the express server then we say which port we want to bind that to so let me just set 3000 choose a random port uh, okay uh, lastly we're gonna need an HTTP listener or HTTP server so 
we're gonna definitely need to require an HTTP and definitely we need to create a server. So uh, this is just like for requiring the HTTP. And lastly, now the, the, the most important part, we need the IO or the socket IO for just like a shortcut, just gonna say it's gonna be an IO and I'm gonna require the socket IO library. And for the socket IO to work, actually, you need to give it your servers, the HTTP server that you have created. So just pass that through to there. Uh, HTTP and everything should be fine. Now under this uh, IO object, you're gonna have the actual uh, IO library, you can use it. Now for connecting a user to this server, we need to list him for the connection. Therefore, it has a very specific connection uh, like a method that gonna allow us to do that. So we need to use the IO library and we say the on method. So the on method gonna allow us to list in for a specific event. So whenever like the user wants to connect to, to the server, he's gonna just like trigger an event or emit an event. And whenever he triggers that event, we need the server to listen for this event. So when the server finds out that all oh, the, the user has triggered this event, so let's just go ahead and like connect him to the server. So it's just gonna be like connection and here for the listener so we're just gonna like take it takes a callback so when the user is connected it's just gonna run this callback right here so for this callback the first parameter it takes is the socket so what is the socket the socket is actually uh take it as a line between the user and the client so the line uh, which links the user to the clients. This is the socket. So this, through the socket, you can send data to that specific user and you can receive data from that specific user. So this is like your connection to the, to the very specific user who has connected to you. And, uh, like by the end, all of the users are gonna like connect through this function. So they all gonna have the same socket right here, which means you're gonna need like to specify rooms or to specify uh, only the broadcast. We're gonna just handle that in, in, in the rest video tutorials in the series. How you can create a very like specific sh chat room where two users can chat privately while the other ones cannot know about that and stuff like this. So just for now, we're gonna just like emit it for everyone and just it really quickly. Now, whenever the users connect, what we want is to say. If the user is connected, we're gonna emit an event to the user. So we're gonna send him event, say, uh, hello and welcome, you are connected. So we're gonna just emit that. So the event is gonna be like, hello, or just like, no, uh, welcome. So as I told you, first give it the event name. So like a very specific name, you need to remember this name and you need to make it like very simple and super simple actually to understand the events and why they are based off and the second thing you need to admit so here you can pass in any data you want from the user so hello uh there and welcome to the socket io server so let's just go remove header it's just ridiculous and here we go here whenever the user actually connects to the server he's just gonna receive this uh welcoming message so let's just go ahead and try it on the on the on the client very quickly. For the client, also we're gonna need to require that. So let me just call it IO. This is gonna be the client, the same thing. But now we need to use the other library that we have got. So just gonna be socket.io-client. And here for the client, we need to connect to the server. So we need to use the connect uh the the connect actually method and for the connect method we can just gonna give it the server url so as you remember here uh we haven't started that so let me just go ahead and do it very quickly we need to listen so we need to say http listen and which port we want to listen is on that port and also we're gonna run like uh, a callback whenever we are listening and everything is working pretty much fine I'm just gonna like console log in order just to make it super useful for us server is listening on local host three or um plus port okay very very simple no, yeah, this is all we're gonna need to do. Now, whenever we run the server, we're gonna this we're gonna get this log message that it's listening to and everything. Now we need to submit or connect to the URL, which is the local host. So as you remember, uh, whenever you're on a, like an express server, it's just gonna run on the local host uh, URL. And when you whenever you specify ports, and here in this case, this is gonna be three thousand ports. So we need to give it which ports. We are actually running on now we have the connection once we have the connection we need to like store the socket so the connection is going to return the sockets uh, and suddenly 
this one this object this socket object is going to be the same as this one so as i told you about the linking or the connection between the client and server this is it so this is the link this one is the same as this one so whenever you like you send uh, or emit an event in here or emit a data in here you're going to receive it in here and vice versa you're going to receive it on the client as well so this is the link i was talking about once you connect there you're going to get the same linking between a server and a client now to listen for this since we are emitting so as you remember someone emits a data and the other one listens for this data so we need to say on the on for listening for a specific event as we did in here so this event we're not gonna like fire it or something the connect method itself it's just gonna fire it for us so or trigger it for us so we don't have to do that manually using the emits uh, method or something while in here for the, our custom events or for custom data exchange we need to emit it ourselves and we need to, to add the listener for it so here as we as we named this which is going to be the welcome and here it takes a uh, callback that through that callback is going to like hold the data that we are sending it from here the same string in here it's just going to like receiver in here you can send whatever data like a blob uh, binary blob or a media like a video image or probably uh, an object an array whatever thing you can send it there it's just gonna like uh, send it and let me just go ahead and console the log here in the clients i'm just gonna console log the data so um, i'm just gonna say received and i'm just gonna console log the data so very quickly very very easily in here let's just go ahead and run the server as you know we need to run the server so I'm just going to say node server.js and the server should be running as you can see in here server is listening on the local host 3000 port now let me just open up uh, a new window or just like a parallel window on visual studio code integrated terminal now through this one we're going to run the uh, client application which is the app.js using node and here we go as you can see here received hello and welcome to sock.io so as soon as it connects you're just gonna receive that so let me just like show you in here pretty quickly on the server that we have actually the server the client is connected and let me just print something in the server so clients or new clients is connected so Okay, and so I can't put it like semicolon and whenever you do something or you change something on the server you're gonna need to run it so yeah you need to like run the node server.js again now as you can see you received hello and welcome to the socket.io new client is connected so as you can see now the client and the server are connected and they can exchange the data using the emits and the on method so this is like the basic method so this is the basic architecture the basic structure you can achieve using socket.io we're going to learn more things on the uh, on the series on the next video tutorial about rooms about channels and how they work and more advanced topics on soccer.io and how you can use it professionally so thank you guys for watching i really do hope you guys have enjoyed as always uh today's video tutorial and you can keep it up with the series and i'll catch you all hopefully in the next video tutorial